We've seen all flash arrays claim anywhere from 200,000 IOPS to over 1 million IOPS, and now we're seeing even much higher than that. But the problem is, is all these performance tests are happening in a perfect lab environment where essentially the all flash array is connected directly to some sort of an IOPS generator. And that's just not the real world. What happens in the real world is you've got multiple all flash arrays. And those all flash arrays are connected to a switch fabric. And of course, the, that is connected to some sort of compute layer that might be running a hypervisor. And then hosts, and then virtual machines. So you end up with this stack that you really have to manage. So uh, Paresh, you, you guys at Cisco obviously live in this world, right? This infrastructure. Uh, what are you guys doing to help people really tune the environment to get the most out of it? Sure, George. So I agree with you. You know, these all flash arrays are really certified for millions of IOPS, you know, response times in microseconds. But, you know, a lot of time when I talk to customers, you know, this is not really we get in the environment, right? Uh, one typical scenario is when customers deploy, they get this performance, but over six months, the performance is not up to the mark anymore. And the problem is, you know, they don't really know where to look. Should they look at the network layer? Should they look at the compute layer? Or should they look at the storage layer, right? So, you know, this is the problem that, um, a problem, or I would say it's a gap that we saw a couple of years back in Cisco. We realized, you know, industry is gonna land into, into the situation pretty soon. So, you know, a couple of us in Cisco, you know, we started thinking about this, and <clears throat> we came up with this architecture that would let us, you know, give, you know, see this whole environment in a holistic view, okay. right? So what we really realized that we really need an integrated analytics engine that looks at every frame flowing on the wire and provides the correlation between them. And I think that holistic view is really important given this infrastructure that starts all the way at an abstracted virtual machine and ends up with a high, very high performance storage device, right? Absolutely, because these all flash arrays, they might be coming from different vendors. They may have different mm -hmm. architectures. Similarly, you know, we have different uh, hypervisors here. They might be running different kind of VMs there. Right, so bringing all of this into the same picture, it's really, you know, it, it really becomes a bit complicated there. And especially if you think about, you know, the organization silos that we have enterprises, they are storage teams, they are network teams, and then they are compute teams. Right, yeah, exactly. And, and I think the, the challenge that we see sometimes is people think they can just plug in an all flash array and all their problems are solved. And, and really all, all you ever do with performance in general is you're just moving the ball somewhere, right? And so now it's back into the fabric or maybe down to the compute layer. So being able to peer into that and know what's going on is really critical, right? Absolutely. So, you know, what I was saying is that few years back when, when we started this journey mm -hmm. is that we realized we need this analytics engine. Mm -hmm. And the number one requirement of that analytics engine is that it needs to watch every bit. Right, because we can't afford to do sampling on 10% or 20% of, right. of, of the traffic. And also we need to look at the traffic going to all the flash arrays and coming from all the compute layer and bring into the sing single picture. That's a really important point because if you miss, so much can happen nowadays between, if you're only sampling bits as an example, you could miss the entire performance spike in that period of time, couldn't yeah. you? And not just that, the second requirement that we thought that this monitoring needs to happen all the time, you know, so it needs to be always on. Okay. You know, uh, imagine this network between the storage layer and the compute layer might be switching billions of frames per second. Now, monitoring billions of frames per second for one day is altogether a separate equation than monitoring the same kind of traffic for 365 days a year. Right. Right. So this is extremely important that what happened six months back what happened three months back and what's happening now so that we do the comparison and bring out the useful insight to the user. So you can almost correlate that data at that exactly. point. Exactly. So then it, my only concern there is, and I want to get back to the list in a second, but it, do you guys have a way to, I mean, that sounds like that's going to take a lot of performance. Do you guys, have you guys uh, thought of that as well? Yeah, you're talking I'm sure about you have, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's the secret sauce. I'm going to right. read that the last thing. Okay. Yeah, the third point is we want to keep it extremely simple. You know, this is a complicated equation. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, if the answer of the complicated equation again becomes complex, it's not a real solution, right? right? So our idea here is we're not really aiming for college students, but we are thinking if interns can bring out useful information out of it, then it's gonna become a cakewalk for you know, the server admins, the, the network admins, 
and these and these you know storage admins. Right, so sure. th that's the key idea that keep the output simple. Okay, that makes sense. What else? What else is a key and, requirement? And the fourth requirement is you know we want to keep it open and programmable. Okay. You know, and uh, you know, j it's not just because the whole industry is moving in that direction, but if we really think about this whole analytics engine that I'm talking about here, if, if this is a pe piece of architecture or software, somebody is going to own it. Right. And then the problem is, if that one organization owns it, how the rest of the teams access it. Yeah. So if it's open, it's programmable. Let's say that this whole architecture is owned by storage teams. Yeah. And if it's, it's open and programmable, the network teams and these server teams can access it using, you know, any of this industry-leading open formats. So that, does the programmability then also uh, lead me more to uh, more of a self-service model where I can have things automatically provisioned and things like that? Yeah, so provisioning is one part, okay. but you know, when we talk about analytics, we you know, really don't talk about provisioning because right. uh, provisioning is one time. And that is the first, I would say, the zeroth factor here, or that answers to an early question, that you know, if you really think about it, right, it, it going in the direction where we can think that this is going to add the fourth layer to this whole environment, right? Sure. The, the compute, the compute, the network, and the storage layer. So, is it going to be fourth layer, which says the analytics layer? No. And that's the key innovation that we really did in Cisco is that we integrated all of that right inside our switches. Okay. So it's integrated with line rate monitoring, always on. And the output is simple and you know accessible in open and programmable format. Got so th think about this, right? This is an analytics engine, mm -hmm. and this is our switching environment, integrated right inside the switching environment. Hmm. So you know the same uh, switches which have been working, you know, throughout the world in some of the largest storage networks out there. Right. All they need to do is enable this functionality with one single click, and they get detailed insight and solve the problems like you know. What happened to my storage array, which was working absolutely fine till six months back, but now I don't see that kind of peak performance. Right. I mean, we have now six months of trending analysis, things like you know exchange completion time, things like IOPS, things like you know throughput, like sure. megabytes per second, and all rest of the metrics. And then, I, and I, my assumption would be that you're really kind of taking kind of big data analytics theory and applying it right into a storage infrastructure or a, or a, a data center infrastructure. Yeah, right? you're taking me back to the same question again and hey, again. I'm sorry. So, yeah, let, let me share it with okay. you. So what's happening in M MDS switches, right? Yeah. Uh, we have switching ASICs, right? Like, yeah. that's not a secret sauce, but right. in the next generation of ASICs, what we have done, we have integrated this functionality you know, of monitoring every bit on the ASICs right there. Okay. And that functionality will further be enhanced with a network processing unit. Now this network processing unit itself is a multi-core, multi-gigahertz processor. Okay. And that works hand in hand with the ASICs to perform this kind of analytics. Now imagine, you know, if you have these switches throughout, you know, distributed throughout your fabric, it's kind of a distributed computing that comes together at the management layer which we have from Cisco as like, we call it data center network manager mm -hmm. or DCNM. That's where it's going to come together and the distributed processing is provided by NPUs which is will be available with, in all the modules on the MDS switches. So with all of those capabilities, I am still able to maintain basically line rate performance and all that oh, yeah. kind of stuff. That's the thing, right? And that's the innovation that has gone inside these ASICs uh, which are in-house developed uh, and designed by Cisco so that when the frame switching happens, there's no impact at all, so that the switching function and all the other features are intact, but the analytics functionality is an added advantage on top of that. Now, I would think that obviously this would be very helpful to sort of react to a problem, like you said, my all flash array isn't performing as good as it used to. Does it give me some predictive capabilities too, where I can go in and say, wow, this is starting to you know, go down in performance, let me do some things to fix it? Well, that's exactly the aim, and you know, if we integrate the functionality on the switches, we automatically make it predictive and proactive. The reason is, because it's always on and we are watching every bit, Imagine, as I said a few minutes before, we have to monitor like all the time. Mm -hmm. So what happened six months before, if the exchange completion time, let's say you know, the right performance from a particular VM from you know, sitting on this host, says that you know, I'm seeing exchange completion time of 10, five milliseconds, let's mm -hmm. say five milliseconds for last six months. Mm -hmm. On Monday morning, this performance goes to 10 milliseconds. Right. right. We don't need humans to monitor that, right? Like right. we just know that the standard deviation is jumped by like 100% more. Sure. Right. So these NPUs 
are capable of installing that kind of trigger. Huh. And that will tell you that this VM talking to a particular LUN is you know, showing a bit wow. bad performance or like, you know, not and you, so and great performance. you can performance. fix it on Monday before everybody starts yelling at you and things exactly. like that. Exactly. So yeah. even before an end user, which is sitting somewhere, you know, in the cloud or, you know, right. way to beyond, he starts complaining, you know, the, these admins, the storage admins, the network admins, and the compute admins, they know, right, what is wrong. Right. Till now, like, people are figuring out, hey, what do I look? You know, where do I look? How do I look? Who's going to look? All these problems. But this solution is going to answer all kind of questions. Well, Pris, thanks very much for explaining all that. I think this really gives people a way to not only respond to problems in the environment, but to also proactively fix things as they arise. Thanks very much for joining us today. I appreciate that.